that, yeah? Yeah, I see it. Broad as brass. That, wow. That's one. That's from a couple of weeks ago, to be fair. Just, just a quick question. How long does something like that take you to collect? Uh, We're talking black books here. How long does that take? I don't even know, you know, fucking ages. Uh, see, I don't get, I don't get, I can't spend like all day on a piece because of, you know, family, work, homes, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I try and do a few hours here and there. But overall, I think I was on that for a couple of weeks. Jeez. And doing bits now and again. A couple of weeks. Wow. What the, what is that about? Yeah, you know I'm saying. That's Inc- from that's last year, I think that one is. More, more, <laughs> more, more. Killer, killer, podcast. Killer, killer, official. Dot com. Street culture TV. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Killer Podcast. Essential as you need to be is another glorious street culture day. And um, how sponsors the mighty GK Nifty Heads have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hoddle Wars Summer 2024. Oh my goodness, we are in the presence of absolute greatness from 1984. Long time this gentleman has been uh, serving us with some of the most upfront, current, and beyond graffiti. And uh, oh my goodness, a trailblazer, a, a pioneer in the game. Um, Kem is inside the place. What are we saying, my brother? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, it's been a long time coming. Absolute pleasure to have you on the podcast, my brother. Thank you very much. Oh my goodness, and haven't we gone through trials and turmoils? But we made it. We got here. We got here in the end, we didn't we? There. We got there in the end, man. <laughs> we'll spare them the technological details, which uh, in theory shouldn't really be happening in 2024. How are you? Where are you? And what you're doing? Uh, I'm good. I'm just outside Brum in my attic, in my little den, talking to uh, Mr. Keller. I, I, I'm presuming this is where all the uh, all the Endeavour concoctions are being created. Am I wrong? Yeah, no, you're, you're correct. This is where I uh, come and hide out the way and just sit and doodle or do some little black piece books or some little canvases or whatever. So yeah, this is my little my little hidey hole. Uh, does the journey? of a writer ever really stop creatively? Um, I had a few years out of it, uh, just completely out of it for a good 10 years. Uh, but I, I still kind of scribbled on stuff and still dropped tags in dust on windows and stuff like that. So, yeah, I suppose it, it has ebbs and flows, doesn't it? Sometimes you're proper on it and then it eases off a bit. It goes in cycles, I think. It does for me anyway. What What are the, the key... Um, moments that give you that whoa I've got to do this I've got to go I've got to you know because obviously ebbs and flows that that must happen a considerable amount I don't know maybe just just seeing some 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 good shit that someone's painted makes you just want to go out and do something or or you'd be I don't know you do a bit of a sketch and you something a bit different so you want to get out there and try it you know different things really just um I think lately, the last few years, the the main drive has been Mr. Posier kicking me up the ass and making me uh making me get back on it because I'd, I'd kind of trailed off a little bit about four or five years ago, and then uh, Posier messaged me and we we talked about painting, so we eventually went and did a painting, and um, it just kind of went from there, and we got on, and he kind of gave me a new lease of life. I think you know what is beautiful about that is that that whole cycle of graph and you know you were the one of the original dons i mean bigger all the birmingham crew but you were you were uk centric and the things that you were delivering and to see it go right round and and then you get the new generation so to speak that you know have picked up on that essence i mean that is um, it's a romantic idea right <laughs> yeah yeah if you put it like that yeah definitely <laughs> never 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 ages does it no i mean i still 
I'm still quite hungry for it. Do you know what I mean? I'm still trying to to get better. There's no there's no um, settling. Do you know what I mean? I'm always trying to do something a little bit better or think of something different. Um, I think the last few years I've switched up my style a little bit, and um, I think the key is to just always always push. For me, anyway, is to always push yourself and try and do the best that you can that you can. Mm. Mm, for sure, I have a I have an affliction for Birmingham so far as their their creative rate and the thought that goes into a lot of what goes on around there. Um, and you're certainly one of the hat tippers. You know, you must have seen such a, a huge change in in graph and the mentality, right? Oh yeah, definitely, without a doubt. Um, back in the early days, it was uh, it it was quite moody. There was a there was a lot of tension, um, yeah. So it's it's definitely changed. It's all quite happy and good. well. The circles I move in, it's all it's all nice and friendly. And do you know what I mean? Mm. But back in back in the day, it wasn't that way. It wasn't that way at all. <laughs> well, well, this it's is quite... where we should start. Let's start back in the day. It's like, so where did it begin, brother? Where did where did the where did the bug hit you? And like, what was what was the landscape back like like back then? Um, it it was weird because as a, even as a really young kid, I was just fascinated by by uh, just seeing right you know graffiti, which in them days a lot of it was probably done in an emulsion or, mm. or, or you know like a paintbrush, like skinheads and stuff like that. Mm. Um, so I kind of started pinching felt tips and just writing any old crap on on garages by my house and just crap like that from a really early age before I really knew what graph was. How early was that? What what it, what age range were you at that time? There was there was a gang of skinheads that were, were kind of local to us, and one of them was um, his his name was Longshot, and he did like this real like uh, just like square letters, and he'd done it and felt tipping this wall, and I was amazed by it, and I used to copy it and that. So I'd have been maybe twelve, so it'd be about eighty two. Something like that. Wow, eighty-two. Yeah, Cause... I was twelve years old, and um, I just used to just used to write any old crap on the wall. And it wasn't until a couple of years later I started seeing some of the actual graffiti and a couple of magazines and stuff, and all the break dancing come out. So you started seeing little bits, and I was just, I was just amazed by it. I was just like, "What the fuck is this? I want to mm. do this." And it started there, so. At school, I started a little a little crew with me and my mates, and we were just tagging and stuff because we couldn't break dance. And um, they kind of got bored of it. And I wanted to carry on, and I met, met a, a guy at college, and uh, he was doing this outline in his book. So I kind of clocked him doing it, so I started doing one and started, <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, we got talking. And uh, he took me to all these spots that I never knew existed where all this graph was. And as soon as I'd seen it, I, I could see it like in front of me. I was, it just blew my head off. And I was like, I need to do this. And that, that guy was uh, Cries from Birmingham. Wow. Okay. Big up Cries. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So he, he kind of opened the doors fully for me. And after that, I just I just love it and I still do it's after funny you say, <laughs> yeah, after all these years, right? It's funny because, you know, it kind of correlates with what Posy was saying about, you know, Mosh was really the go-to um, medium of of just getting those fills right. And, you know, because because we're talking of a time where, you know, to get paint, even to do fades and, and such, it was, you know, it was quite, it was quite, um, it was like a mystic thing. Like when you pull up and look at a piece, it was like, what, how? Like, yeah, yeah, that was the word. And also then they were they were fucking tiny as well. They were really small pieces compared to what we paint now. Do you know what I mean? They were they were tiny little things. And what was the what was the landscape in Birmingham um, like for its time? Um, I would say kind of late eighty eighty six onwards. It was absolutely battered to the fuck. There was there was stuff everywhere. The buzzies were crap. They just Covered in tags, all the subways in Birmingham, all around it, it just exploded. It was just mental. 
Because you had the buses as well. Back. You had the buses as well, which were were a bit yeah, of a phenomenon. Yeah, I mean, we probably we probably did the buses for a good couple of years, and then we moved on to track sides and started doing the track sides. And well, then, that's the thing. You were like one of the first people, people to do. You were one of the first people to do track sides. You were you were early adoptee to that, right? <laughs> it sounds like you know more about it than me. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did do a few. We did do a few. <laughs> Very good. Get you out of trouble, shall we say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We uh, we used to uh, we used to hit the track sides quite a bit. We didn't have the um, we didn't have the trains that we could hit in the, in Birmingham, so it was mainly train train lines, walking them down the lines and stuff. I always bug out about you know meeting people that were first generation that that saw it for what it was, and and I think to a lot of people, I you know the closest comparable I think, particularly for hip hop, was. That it was almost like the the hooligans. Uh, Tizer said this. It's like the hooligans of hip hop, and you know, it was almost like the, the the people that wanted to cause more anarchic, as opposed to like the break dancers or hip hop heads that would rap and stuff. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. That kind of makes sense. Yeah, we just wandled, really. Yeah, Do you know yeah. What I mean, uh, just getting your name out there as much as you could. I used to go out on my own. So I used to just just catch a bus into town, into Birmingham, and just just walk around with paint pens and spray cans up my sleeve or whatever, and just walk around on my own and just get my tag up. So I kind of, I think early on nobody really knew I was, and then all of a sudden because these little trips to town on the night, they were like, "The fucking hell's this come from?" Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But a lot of them was solo missions early on. Really, so so it was really just just the act of getting up and being being present, and no one really knew. Yeah, 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 definitely. That is bonkers. That is bonkers. And who were you, who were the influential people within the Birmingham area? You know, as things started developing, who 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 was moving and shaking at that time for you? Um, for me personally, um, probably uh, UBA, so United Bad Art. Um, so that would have been a Tiski. Um, Chase Chase was probably my all-time favourite writer, and I've got I've got one of his original black book sketches here on the wall as well. Oh, really? So, wow! Yeah, yeah. Um, and Zucky as well. He was tagging Mix back in the day early on, and uh, it was weird because we was all kind of arch enemies, and as we've met later on in life, it's like we we're, we're brothers now. Do you know what I mean? But Let's... back back in the day, it wasn't like that. Let's talk about the arch enemy aspect because you know, with age comes wisdom, right? And you guys yeah, meeting up later yeah. down the line, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I love, I love him to death. He's a, he's a great lad. But when we was younger, you know, it wasn't so, uh, it wasn't so nice. So it was a lot. It was more of a darker age of graffiti, where you know. Yeah, it, I'd say so. Definitely, there's been there's been many fights and. Like uh, getting on buzzes, and there's another crew on there, so you start trying to out tag each other, and the, the buzz will stop, and all the people are getting off, and you're just trashing the buzz, and then you can hear the sirens come in, so you're all running off and hiding and stuff. But uh, it was it was wicked, it was it was naughty, but it was good. With with regards to that and um, the lifestyle that that perpetuated, did. Did did it ever become apparent that this thing had a, a real movement happening, and you were you were you were you were being chased? It was a, it was a it was an energy of well, because you know you have the internals, which is between you and the rivals, but then there's also this higher authority coming <laughs> coming at you um, from all angles as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's a good point. Um, yeah, because they, they had a, a, a section of. I guess they were a transport police. We used to call them the Yorkies, and they started following the buses and stuff. And so, if they saw you tagging, they'd stop the bus and come on and arrest you. And they'd start taking photographs of all the tags. So, if you got arrested, you get you get nicked for all of it, rather than just one tag. Really? And then, yeah, yeah. And they used to follow the buses, and there was a few incidents with them because they're. they're I, I don't know if they were actual police or what, but we used to, obviously, when they used to grab hold of us, we'd, we'd fight back. Do you know what I mean? I mean, they'd just stand there, we'd try and get away from them or whatever. So it did get quite, it did get quite bad. And then, they, of course, as it went on, they got to know your faces and stuff as well. 
but to be fair, I was quite, I kind of kept a low profile with them. So I kind of kept out of it. I had a couple of run-ins with them. So mm. it wasn't too bad for me. But um, Yeah, but yeah, once so is the, enough, right? Once is enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was enough, <laughs> definitely. Talk to me about uh, the way in which, you know, writers were treated. I mean, you mentioned there that, you know, there was brawls and fights. And, you know, I mean, we're talking about the 80s, you know, the, the police were a whole different breed back then. It's fair to say, right? Yeah, definitely, yeah. The, um, now everyone knows their rights and, you know, if you can't say that to me, you can't do this, blah de blah But back then, it, it was different. I've had I've had kickings off the police. I've had a good, good thumping off them. Really? But you get you get, you you kind of get used to it, right? You kind of you have to you have to work within the the the, the, the lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to say I was I was quite I don't know I was lucky or careful, but I didn't have too many run-ins with the police. It was mainly uh, just shit with other writers a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. You know, different different arguments and different crews, and you you wouldn't be able to get to certain areas. It got a bit. It got a little bit gangy towards the end of the eighties, I think. Do you know what I mean? Bron- mm. Bron- kind of split into two, so you got um, there was a lot of crews under the heading of the Southside Mafia, mm-hmm. and then there was uh, was it Colt, and he started a uh, transit massacre in the East Coast, and it got a bit. It did get a bit hairy at times. There was a few. There was quite a few run-ins. Really, but it was wow. all, I mean. It was probably a lot of it was them times anyway. Do you know what I mean? It was it was a lot different then. I mean, you you're inventing as you go, right? There's no there's no model to to graph. Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And it and was it, weird. It's like you kind of you you kind of had to, you couldn't bite because that was obviously a, the ultimate sin. But you couldn't stray too far away from the formula either, if that mm, makes sense. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It was like. Uh, you know, 3D with the lines in it and the bubbles and the, I don't know, characters with guns. It was always, it was always quite samey. It, it was strange, really. If you, if you stood out, if you went outside of that, that kind of model, mm. you were kind of frowned upon a little bit back then. It was quite strange. So you, you couldn't bite, but you couldn't be too original either. And Isn't kind that of strange? Keep it it's, it's almost like, What's original to you may not be. It's 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 like a hierarchy of of graph, right? <laughs> yeah, you can do that. Really, but you can't really do this. Bit of time. It's just mm. looking back at it now. You you kind of think about it, and it, I remember juice. The juice was always very different, and I, people just didn't get it. They just didn't get it at all. See, I put I put juice up there with part two and the kind of the characters that we know and love that really push boundaries. I mean, when you talk about yeah. art realism, you know, and, and abstract and, you know, that kind of, that era that, yeah, I can imagine it, you know, to a lot of hardcore graffiti writers, it's like, well, that goes straight to exhibition, doesn't it? You know, yeah, yeah. how did you, how did you navigate through that era? Because obviously you, you've brought your own um, finishing touches, shall we say that, that actually, it paid dividends at that time to think outside the box and move the move the creative formula forward a bit, didn't it? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I think it's, it's, I don't know really. I think you just have to do what what you have to do. Do you know what I mean? You've got to you've got to put some of your personality into it and and just always try and, and push push yourself and push for more. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I think as I'm getting older now, I'll probably feel that more than ever because, you know, I'm I'm, get, I'm thinking more how much longer am I going to be painting walls? Do you know what I mean? I might not be able to paint walls in another five or six years' time. So I'm trying to savour each one and try and try and push it as much as I can. Not Not for anything, just for myself. Yeah, I get you. I get you. I think I think everyone holds a a level of um, flame when it comes to that. Um, sometimes it, and I, certainly in the case of beatboxing and and other art forms, you you find the influences come from the most weirdest of places. Like you know, Europe really held 
um, accountability to some of the, you know, like Scandinavia and, you know, things that Delta was doing and then later on with Lumit and, and Dime and then, you know, it, it, you almost need another source of influence, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, you know, as the internet comes, that changed graffiti massively. Um, because obviously back in the day, all you'd see is either other people's photos or you, you literally would have days and just go to, just go looking for new stuff. Mm. You know what I mean? Going to, to these real shitty places and just, just walking around, hoping to find something. And you, a lot of the times you'd be walking, especially around Spaghetti Junction, around there. It's such a big area, kind of spread out. There's canals and there's different tunnels and this, that, and the other. So you'd be wandering around and you could smell the paint. You'd be like, I can show, I can smell the paint. It's start getting exciting because you think you're going to see a new piece. Do you know what I mean? It was, uh, it was really different. Now, obviously, you just you just go on the internet. But I mean, I guess a, a big thing for a lot of old school writers is the internet. Some people love it, some people hate it. I think it's it's just something that's changed, and it, it's got its good points and it's got its bad points, I guess. But on a on a whole, I think it's a good thing because you get to see so much more. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I I I love the fact that it's it's op- it's an open market, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good, man. You said you said there about um, smelling it and almost hunting it down. It's uh, it, it kind of reminds me of uh, you know that kind of ghost hunter, <laughs> you know, <laughs> trying to find it. We we smelt it. We where where can we see it? I mean, that in itself, finding plots, finding the new thing, that that's part of the charm, right? Yeah, yeah, it was. We'd we'd spend whole weekends just searching out new graph or looking for new spots or whatever, and we'd be, you know, going under bridges, climbing over fences, just going places that probably 99% of the population would never see. Some of these strange tucked away places that you just stumble across and it's like, the fuck? And you can smell a bit of paint, so you're walking through all kinds of shit to try and get to it. So yeah, it was part part and parcel of it. Yeah, the kind of thing that people don't readily understand about graph is that there's there's a code and there's a lifestyle that runs with that code. It's it's and and there's in rules. There's things like just going back to the you know the the more um you it's it's keeping up with the formula of the day, right? And to be present in the graph scene. You almost got to understand what those codes are, and moreover, respect it. Like you could, you could be smelling the paint and going about your business, and and all of a sudden you said, "But that plot might be some other cruise, and it might." Then there's there's rules to that as well, right? Yeah, 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 definitely. There was definitely spots so you just you wouldn't dare paint there. You just wouldn't dare paint there because the amount of you know hassle you get from it, it just wasn't worth it. Give me it some. Give me, give me some spots that you, even now you think, well, that was notorious. Like that, it's not. It may not be around anymore. But for for Birmingham of its time, like what were the most exclusive spots that may not be around anymore? There was um, the very Merry Tunnel, which is what we named it. Which was it's it's a subway, a closed off subway in the middle of Birmingham. And it's like an access tunnel to uh, there's like a Queensway that goes under under Birmingham. Okay. And there's a little there's a little pull in to the to the side of one of the roads. And if you pull in there, there was a subway. And you go through this subway. It's probably about half maybe maybe not half a mile long, but it was a long subway. And then right the other side, you go you get some steps up to a door that you can only open from the inside. And it used to come out by the town hall. So what we used to do, we used to walk down the Queensway and walk up and then somebody would go through and open the door and we'd let everyone in and we'd be painting there Saturday afternoons, Saturday nights, any time we want because nobody could come in. Do you know what I mean? That is so good. It was it was a wicked spot. It was horrible. <laughs> but it was good. Cool. Loved it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we'd spend all night in there and have like a little graph party down there. There'd be like 10 of us painting or something. So it was it was a wicked spot, and there was other tunnels 
that come off it as well, but they've been bricked up. And somebody had smashed a couple of bricks out. You could shine something in there. And you could see other oh, subways that come off it. We never got into them, but that was that was a wicked spot. That was, was right in the middle of town, and nobody knew he was there. But you it was said... the spot like if you went to Heath Town or something where Goldie was from, and all he, you wouldn't dare dro- even drop a tag there. Really? Mm. Wow. You said there was ten of you there. Ten of you. It, like who else was moving and shaking with you at that time then? Um, it would have been, so we used to paint with, the would be myself, uh, Meth, uh, Fuse, Custo, um, who else was there? It was Custo, blah, 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 blah. It was Etch was there. There's quite a few of us. I can't even remember now who else was there. Get them names in, baby. Them. Get them names in. <laughs> <laughs> Give the flowers. The flowers are out now, baby. <laughs> <laughs> there was just a fair few of us, and we'd meet up and just paint in there. Oh, so we're, we're talking, cause, you know, 87 was really when, you know, you, you went ham, right? Are we talking about that? Are we talking about around that sort of time? Yeah, yeah, probably around that time, about 87 to, yeah, probably till about 19. And then I, I think I stopped about 1990, 1991 for a little bit. Well, for about 12 years. Why is that? Um, I I had children. That'll do it. <laughs> yeah. I just felt like um, basically the main, the main real reason for it was uh, everyone started going to raves and, and people just stopped painting just overnight. Were you the, the, Did you go out raving? Was that a no, thing? no? I, I I fucking hated it because in my mind it killed graft. It so did, I wouldn't even it? give it the time of day. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It was. Yeah. I just was like, that's just wank, and I, I didn't like it. Uh, and I'd I'd kind of got these responsibilities dropped on me. Yeah. When I stopped painting, I was absolutely gutted. Oh, so so, so it wasn't it wasn't the case that you wanted to stop stop so to speak, but you. It wasn't that you wanted to stop, so to speak, but you felt that the trend had, had kind of reached a peak and everyone was kind of disbanding. Yeah, I mean, it, it did. It almost stopped out overnight. The, the the last piece I did before I quit the, uh, was in Selly Oak. And I went there and painted on my own because, and there was nobody there, which was unheard of for a weekend. Wow. And uh, just yeah, just everyone just quit and started going to raves and fucking blowing whistles and stuff. And I just hate rave purely because in my mind it killed graph in the eighties. It really <laughs> so, did. Okay. You're not the yeah, no real talk. It's, you're not the first person to say that because for a lot of people that you know, hip hop as a whole, it descended into the UK and it 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 had a, almost like a religious, you know. We're gonna live forever, guys. You know what I mean? This is this is us. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I just I just thought it'd last forever. I never even I never even considered that it would stop. And then it it just did, and it felt like it happened overnight. And I was uh, yeah, I was gutted, man. It just seemed to end. And now obviously I've got the the pressure of having kids young and bills to pay and all that business. So. Mm. It was just, I would say it was more forced on me, pressured onto me to quit than than wanting to. And um, yeah, yeah, I didn't do anything for about till about ninety six, mm. mm. and I had to have an operation, so I was off work for weeks, and it was really hot. And I just sat in the garden, I just started doodling, and I did started doing a few black book pieces. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was kind of before the internet kicked in properly, so. I didn't really, I'd lost touch with everyone. I didn't really know if there was a scene anymore. So I carried on drawing for a bit mm-hmm. and then kind of stopped again. And then it's about 2002 or something, 2001. And we got the internet and I started seeing stuff on the internet. And then I started seeing stuff mm-hmm. done by people that I used to know. And I'm looking at what they're doing now and it's like, fuck, how are they doing that? Wow. And I was amazed all over again, do you know what I mean? It's a gift that keeps on giving, isn't it? Especially when you hold your um uh, you hold your um what's the word? And I think we all go through it. 
all of a sudden, someone out of nowhere, like a, like a maverick, suddenly charms you, and you've got something there that you're like, well, well, so people do give a shit. <laughs> yeah. I think the, the main one that I saw was, well, there was a couple, there was um, Croys who I hadn't seen forever, and I've gone online and seen this stuff he's painting, and it just blew my head away. I was like, how is he doing that? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And another one was um, was Chu, because Chu oh. used to knock about with us for a bit. Can I, can I just stop you there? Chu, 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 without question, is one hell of an unsung hero in the Brum area. Unquestionable. Yeah, I mean, he's done some. The stuff that, uh, that I saw online before I started again the second time round, I just couldn't grasp it. I was just like, how the hell has he even done that? Mm. The 3D you know thing I mean? as well, when you put the glasses on and you see the whole yeah. thing pop. Wow. Just insane. He just sees the world through different eyes than everybody else, I think. An absolute beast of his time. Mm. I agree. Um, you mentioned there before about uh, Goldie. Um, of course, it's well documented. But how how ruthless uh, was was him and his fraternity at the time? Because, you know, they... It almost goes down in folklore, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, he was an idol of mine, to be perfectly honest. I used to see his stuff, and I was just, I thought it was just the best stuff I'd ever seen. And um, I started painting with uh, Des mm -hmm. from Warsaw. Got you, uh, got you. Rest in peace. It's not with us any longer, unfortunately. Rest in peace, yep. But, um, yeah, I was painting with him quite a bit. And he was painting with Goldie a lot of the time. And um, he introduced us, but uh, we, we, it, didn't, it wasn't a good meeting. So, um, <laughs> no, listen, it, it, it's, an, it's a curious scenario where um, you, you get these figureheads that come through the ashes. And, um, and, and this is the best bit about talking to someone like yourself, because... You get all this intel, incredible stories and and insights that that aren't readily talked about. Yeah, there's a, there's a few things that obviously go on and stuff that that aren't aren't common knowledge, I guess. Crazy, crazy. Um, so coming out of the uh, rave era, um, where everyone was having a good old part in a and a whistle blow, and you were there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how much how much stock did you have in terms of black book action? From from. From when I quit or when I was first painted? Both. Let's go both. First one. Start uh, with that. Early on. Yeah, early on there was there was quite a bit. I've still got a probably I've got a handful of pieces from the eighties, black book pieces, but it, it, you just kind of lose them over the years. I've got the ones I did in the nineties. And then this time round I've I've got there's a big folder under this seat that I'm sitting on that's just ram packed with shit from over the years. Can we get that out? Can we see anything? Because we're um, you know we're zooming right now. We're in your we're in your uh, um, habitat right now. Is there anything we can, we can draw out? Somewhere? Yeah, I want to see. Come on, let's let's let's, let's get into it. There's a few in there. Uh, Serious? <laughs> that's that's no moon. That's a space station. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few bits in there. Uh, let's have a look. Fantastic. So, uh, so you get listen. Tell me that Killer Killer podcast don't give you the the, the, the insights right here. Let's get into it. I'm trying this to find it. some older ones. This is a trip right here. Here we go. These are the more recent ones, I think. Wow. Stop it. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah, I see it broad as brass. That, wow. That was one. That's from a couple of weeks ago, to be fair. Just, just a quick question. How long does something like that take you to kind uh, of, We're talking black books here. How long does that take? I don't even know, you know, fucking ages. Uh, see, I don't get, I don't get, I can't spend like, all down a piece because of, you know, family, work, homes, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I try and do a few hours here and there. But overall, I think I was on that for a couple of weeks. Jeez. And doing bits now and again. A couple of weeks. Wow. What the... 
What is that? A, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's Inc- from that's last year, I think. That one is. More, more, <laughs> more, more. <laughs> uh, incredible, incredible. See, look, you're getting insights right here. This is the inner workings of endeavor. The realism. Crazy. My goodness. Let me wow. find some old ones. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go deep into the archive here. Come on, Kate. Sorry. Let's get into it. <laughs> this is unprecedented, by the way. I, we did not. F- we did not forecast this happening. He's literally pulling these out of the bag. This is 2015. What the Fibbins is that? In yeah, 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 yeah. What, so that, when was that again? Sorry, say that again. Uh, 2015. That one. 15, 15. You know, casual 2015. Pull out the bag. Come on. That's a recent one as well. They're not in any chronological order. They're just kind of chucked in there. I don't blame you. <laughs> Where'd you begin? That is incredible. More. <laughs> More. <laughs> Next. I mean, this is rare. What, we, what, we're, what, we're, what we're witnessing here is some... This is, this is OG <laughs> levels. What we got... <laughs> this is older stuff in this one. <laughs> oh, we're going... Oh, we're going archive. Oh can see, you can see the dust coming out of them as we're as we're talking, right? <laughs> this is, is shit here, man. Yeah, yeah, come, come. In, in fact, warts and all, you know, because I think for everybody that's watching, it's like, you know, th- this is some masterful stuff. I don't even know that one was done. Wow. Well, no colour, just straight black no, and white. No I've, I mean, I must admit, I've been trying to push them a lot more. The last couple of years, the older ones are smaller and mainly black and white. Why is that? Is that just to work with um, letters as opposed to, you know, leaning I on the colour? I think just, just trying to push it more and more, I guess, just trying to add more to them. And... Yo, when was that? When, when was that one there? Unfortunately, I haven't dated these ones, but they're probably about... 2010, something like that. What were you doing in 2010, people? What was going on in your lives in 2010? My guy was sitting there studying, studying. <laughs> Mate, there's fucking loads in this one. Really? This Come was on. done some French geezer, <laughs> I think. Band. Oh, wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'd see, And each time you pull something out, it's like there's a different perspective. Every time. I try and switch it up a little bit. <laughs> versatility again you know we're looking at you know the, the, the realism and and just in sketch form as well oh is a color the one that's old i forget i forgot what's in here to be honest a bit of color on that one <laughs> nice no nice. you know what you know what's interesting is that the the reapplication from sketch to to wall there's still this uh there's this space where it goes from from page to 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 surface which i think you know, that blows everybody's minds, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't. At best, I'll take a scribble to a wall these days. I don't really take sketches anymore. Well, because you've um, got everything you need, right? You've got all your tools in the, you know, in 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 the box, and you kind of work it as I you think go. It, right? it kind of, it kind of, um, it kind of ruins the day for me if I take a sketch because I'm trying to match the sketch rather than just feeling it. Mm. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Do you, um, are you ever happy with that? Are you ever happy with taking the sketch and the wall and looking back on it and thinking, oh, you know what, it's not... Do you ever no. get... <laughs> no, I think, I think you struggle to, or I do, I struggle to, to recreate a sketch exactly as it is on a wall. Um, mm. It's a whole different thing to drawing on paper and drawing a line that's this long to striking a line that's six foot long on a wall. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I prefer yeah. the movement and the energy of doing it impromptu. I mean, it's all kind of the same style. So, like you say, you've already got the you've already got the basics of what you want to do in your head. It's just trying to switch it up a little. And uh, 
I get quite conscious as well that if you get a certain style that it can be difficult to to make sure that you don't that, that everyone's not exactly the same. Do you know what I mean? Because that's hard, you right? Want... Because you're you're going with what your mind thinks, and never mind the fluidity and how you, um, you know, because you're faced with it. You're faced with a blank canvas, and to a lot of people, that's like, well, let's go to default. Panic default. You know. Yeah, yeah. Go to the tried and tested. Um, I tend to sketch up really, really quick and then paint quite slowly. <laughs> That's generally how it goes. But I don't know whether I'm slow or paint reposier because he's so bloody quick. He's so bloody quick. Yeah, he's fast. He's so fast. Furiously and so fast. Precise. It's ridiculous, really. I'm trying to keep up with him and I. I never do. I'm always behind. He's always slagging me off. So can I ask you then, how how do you, how how are you, um, because, you know, to a lot of people, I mean, there's many people that don't sketch, but to the level in which you compete, and I say that, you know, with Posia, how do you, how do you ever come away from a, a wall without a sketch thinking to yourself, yeah, I'm happy with that? Are you ever happy? Um... I think generally I'm happy. I'm normally happy on the day. If I'm happy on the day, normally a couple of weeks later, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, okay. If I'm Don't a bit you. like, I'm not sure. It kind of grows on me. Mm. I don't know. There's, there's obviously there's there's probably a handful of favourites that I've done over the years that I still I look at now and I think, oh yeah, I like that one. I'm happy with that one. Mm. But a lot of it, I mean, even just picking this sketch, this old folder up, I forgot what's in there, to be honest. I don't really sit and, and look through it. I can't why not? remember. Why, why, why don't you, though? Why don't you? Why wouldn't? I mean, I get it because it's almost like past tense, isn't it? Like, oh, well, but there must be, even looking through there now, you, you must, it must, you know, not, never mind the nostalgia. It, it must hop back and, hey, you know, I really must do that again. I do like this one. I'll just put it on the top. I thought I quite like that one. Which this one was that? Was, um, it's quite a simplish one, just with some red paper. I mean, it's banging. <laughs> you not thought about doing exhibitions or anything? Okay, you never. I've done a few. Yeah. I've done a handful. Um, probably done maybe four or five or something over the years. Oh, but... so you've done a hand. You've done a good steady run then. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I don't really push it as I should, or as some people do. I don't know. I just, I just like drawing. I like painting, and that's enough for me. Mm, mm. Do you know well, what I mean? It, yeah, I do. It's nice if somebody. Um, I get people message me now and again saying, "Oh." Would you, you know, they'll commission a sketch or something, but I don't really like doing commissions either, if I'm being perfectly honest, because it, it changes it from something I want to do to something that I feel like I've got to. Mm. And I feel I feel the pressure of it. It's not fun, is it? I can imagine. Yeah, I'd, I'd much rather do a drawing and somebody go, I love that. Can I buy it? And I'll just go, Yes, yeah, Sam. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't, I'm not a big lover of commissions. Oh, uh, I did it for a while. I painted. I painted full time for about three or four years. And when I first did it, I was I was loving it. I saw this is the best job I've ever. I only have to do a couple of paintings a week. I can do whatever I want for the rest of the week. But uh, the novel, I found that when I was when it comes to weekends to paint for myself, I just wasn't. I wasn't enjoying it like I used to. Mm, mm, I feel you. The competition, especially when it comes to like, you know, doing doing designs, it's almost like by numbers, isn't it? Especially if you, you know, as well established as you are, it's like, well, actually, not only do I love the things that I do that aren't getting paid, but actually, you should be liking this as well. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. And just some of the shit that people want you to pay. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh. I don't know. Can you can you draw a, a, a fairy castle with my daughter in it, with her hair coming down, with Spider Man going on her fucking hair and a helicopter? And I'm just like, what? 
We do need the poo on the corner as well, just a good measure. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I mean, just like on a football stadium on that little cupboard over there, and I'm just like, oh, do you know what? I just no, I just don't want to do it. I think that's the essence that people don't, you know, Joe Public, I, mops, members of public, they don't, I don't think they understand the, um, what that does, because it's creative. It's like, it's, it's the same difference as seeing, you know, the Mona Lisa, you know what I mean? Can you just put a, you know, can you put a, a flower in a pocket? It doesn't work like that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's not, I mean, it, I don't mean it in, in like a, in a diva kind of way. Like, oh, I'm not doing that, you know, that's beneath me or whatever. It's just, I have no motivation to, to want to do that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I do. I know exactly. Is that the core principles of graph kicking in where it's like, well, I do it for me and that's the end of it? Uh, Maybe. I don't know. I think I just just cherish every time I paint now. Now I'm getting older and I don't want to, I don't want to tarnish it with doing shit that I don't want to do. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I only have limited time that I can give to it it's not like when I was younger and I was out every single day mm. for as long as I wanted to be I've got responsibilities I'm cracking on a bit now do you know what I mean and it's I just so I just cherish what time I have and in that time I want to do what I want to do I don't yeah. want to yeah I feel you and it, it kind of it, that resonates with me a lot with with beatboxing and you know mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean I'm always up for bookings don't get me wrong but you know if a bar mitzvah or something kicks in and they ask me to do certain things it's like I actually more look forward to the bar afterwards <laughs> yeah yeah 100% mate 100%. <laughs> it's just what we programmed to do right it's 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 a byproduct of um okay it's nice to get paid for certain things but at the same time it's like you know who's you know who coined it perfectly was um my brother Torch from Germany and he 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 was like you know I I I love a good splash festival or a Glastonbury and, you know, you're performing to 40,000 people. But at the end of the day, I still go back home and I sketch like I mean it in my bedroom. Like, it, nothing beats that. Yeah, yeah. It's true. It's, it's a good way of putting it. It is a good way of putting it. That's the hip-hop culture right there, isn't it? Mm, I think that's, you know, if you, if you, if you stick with something for, for, for a certain amount of time or a good few years, you're obviously doing it because because you love doing it. Mm. There's no other reason. Do you know what I mean? And that's enough for me, really. I think you're the go-to. You're the okay sign, brother. I'll be really honest with you, and that's why it's such a pleasure to have you on. Because you know, you you were there, still working away, studying in the time in the down period, and then you come out the other side, and it's almost like you, you kind of you just jump back on the train and it, you know what I mean? It's almost like the movement kept on going. And, you know, I think a lot of people uh, lean on that for assurance, you know? Mm. Yeah. I think, it, like I say, I, I, I still love it. I probably love it more now than I did then. Talk to me about that. Why is that? Um, it's a pretty good question, actually. Hey, you're on the Killer Keller podcast, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna, we were gonna get you hooked at one stage or another. <laughs> I want to, I want to get good at it. That's what it is. I want to get better, better all the time. Mm-hmm. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? That's that's the hook that keeps me. I just, I mean, since I've been playing with Posier as well, um, I think my whole approach to it has changed as well mm. so i'm mm. doing stuff I've, you know i've, I've learned i'm still learning mm. and i'm doing stuff that i haven't done before mm. so i've tried different things i'll step back and look at it and go fucking hell that looks wicked why didn't i do that before do you know what i mean yeah yeah so it's that it's that little learning bit and, and surprising myself sometimes i guess mm. um but it, it's always short-lived as i say i'll do summer and i'll come back normally a day's painting is Paint, 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 paint all day long. Don't really look at it as such. Take a shitload of pictures. Come home, chill out, and then look at the pictures. And then go, oh, I've, that bit's come up. Look at that bit. Or I'm not happy with that bit. Or mm. So it's always always uh, self-criticism, I guess, just looking at it, thinking we should have done that bit a bit better. You've missed a bit there. Da, da, da. 
So I think that's that's the key that keeps me back at it. It's, it's just always self- wanting to be better. Yeah, and it's a self study, right? If I if I mm-hmm. if I it, when I say the word mediocrity, <laughs> when I say the word mediocrity, and that lies when within any art form, like when you step outside and actually look around you. And I'm not talking about, you know, I'm not talking about the dons that we've aforementioned. Do you ever, does it spur you on or does it, does it make you, does it make you reflect in a particular way? Because, you know, the bombing culture, the dub culture, the, you know, two years and tap out culture of graph, you get these moments of absolute gold where someone just comes with something and disappears into the, the night and it's like, dude, like what happened to that guy? Do you know what I mean? You must have seen that a billion times. Yeah, definitely. There was uh there was a guy that used to paint with us from Birmingham called Fuse. And he was a different kind of geezer. Mm-hmm. Very quiet. Um it was it was it was different. It's the best way I can describe him. But he was just so good. Mm-hmm. He was just so clean, different, just just brilliant. And he was in our crew for a bit, and we was honoured to have him in it. And then he just just disappeared. Mm-hmm. And nobody's nobody's seen him or heard of him for probably over twenty years now. Wow. We don't know geez. where he is. There's different stories about how he's here or he's there or this has happened or whatever. Mm-hmm. But literally nobody's really seen him for probably 20 years and it's it's just added to the enigma of him. Do you know what I mean? He's, it's just added to the mystery and the, you know, the, he was just so good. And it, there's been a few that have come along and you just think, oh, this kid's got it, man. This, look at this geese. I'm like, how's he doing this? And all of a sudden, nothing. And way? people forget so quickly, mm. you know, when you when you're painting and you're putting paintings up every week or every couple of weeks or whatever, and you're there, people just think you're going to be there forever. And then when they slip off, you don't even notice a lot of the time because there's so much mm. to keep coming, keep coming. I mean, as for the tagging culture and the dub culture and all that, I've I've done all that and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. So I don't mind that either. Do you know what I mean? It's all part and parcel. Yeah. I know some people look down on it or or people that are into dubs or whatever, like, oh, you know, piecing's no good or whatever. I like just love all of it. I love to see a good tag. I like to see a nice dub. It's all part and parcel for me. I like all of it. Yeah, it's transient, isn't it? And then you, you hail up some, like, fuse you mentioned, mentioned there. I, I will, at this point, my caveat is I know very little about Birmingham, you know, I, I don't spend even a quarter of the time. I go in there like a like a tourist and I see everything. And listen, there's some long stayers like yourself, uh, Zuki, um, and and moving forward as well. You know, you got your causes and your your sums and yeah. your and your um, tempo thirty three big up tempo. And you know, it yeah, cuts. tempo's tempo's active man. He does some good stuff man. He works hard. Yeah, and Crutz as well. You know, I'm a big fan of Crutz. Yeah, yeah. Such a nice guy is as well honestly it's sort of the earth like he's been around the spot with cause and and you know it was just great to great to chop it out outside of you know we're just talking about stuff and it's it's i think that's what i think that's what separates birmingham for a lot of other other places is that um it's so grounded uh, your his, your guys history uh, allows for um good good uh um good grounds for incubation and development and and having legends that really support and and they're a part of the scene mm. yeah i mean i'll encourage anybody anybody starting out because we all started somewhere do you know what i mean you mm. don't know you don't know where their road's going to lead to so some somebody that, that that some writers might look down and go ah oh, shit you know whatever you don't know how much they're going to put into it and where they're going to go with it. Because mm. we was all shit when we started. Do you know what I mean? There isn't any, there's no magic formula. It's just about work. Yeah, it is. That's all it is. It's not, It's you're not born with a talent to beatbox or to do graffiti. It's, it's all work. Yeah, That's it all is. it is. It's just keep doing it, keep chipping away at the block, and you just don't know where it's going to lead. 
I yeah, didn't I'm... think I'd be sat here doing a podcast with you and us. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I didn't see that at all. Didn't see it coming, did we? Um, yeah, <laughs> and that's the beauty of graph is what people see on the offset of anyone that's ambitious enough to and, and taking such huge risks suddenly becomes this, you know, void, for instance. My God, like, dude, is absolutely tearing. Um, look, look, I'm going to move on a little bit because I want to know, give me some stories, man. Give me some stories. Give me some graph stories. Give me some of them, you know, the high octane moments, that, 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 that some of the most scariest moments in your life where you're like, well, I can't believe I'm telling this story um, on a podcast. Well, most of the stories would probably be old stories from the 80s when I was running around like a fucking lunatic, but... Go on, Not let them so out. Let now. them all out. Tell us all. Tell all. Um, let's see. There was there was a good police chase one. That was quite a good one. It was uh we was we was in Birmingham and we was we was gonna go out down the train lines or whatever, and we bumped into another writer who was a tagger at the time that was up. He was fucking everywhere and he tagged Acme. Ah, okay. And we got chatting, and he says, what are you up to? And he says, oh, we're going to go down the train on, so we're doing whatever we want. He says, got any paint? And I says, yeah, yeah. And he took a can off me. This is a Saturday afternoon on a main road, just out, you know, a busy road. Mm -hmm. And he takes his can off me and just tags on this billboard. Literally, as he tags, a police car pulls up. So we split. I run into this, uh, like, kid's playground. You know, the they got like mesh, like a brick wall and then mesh quite high yep. up with the yep. little squares in it. So I've jumped up that. Police, one of the coppers is running into the park, jumped up that, I've got my fingers in it. Got over the top. And there's <laughs> yeah. like an alley at the back of the house. He's start running down this alley. And uh, it's a dead end. I'm like, fuck. And I turn around, I see this copper just getting over the wall, so I'm like, shit. So I just jumped straight over this fence in someone's garden. And oh, there's a... Uh, there's a, an Indian woman hanging and washing up in the garden. I've run straight past her into her house. Into the house? The front door. Yeah, straight through the house. Uh, gone to the front door, opened the door, looked out the door and seen a police car coming down the road. So I've shut the door again quick. I'm like, shit. And then this guy's come out and he's like, what's going on? What's going on? I was like, fuck, think, think, think. I said, there's a big gang of lads out there and they pulled a knife on me. They're going to stab me up. I'm really sorry. And he was like, oh, oh, don't worry. Come in. Sat me down in his living room, made me a cup of tea. And I uh, sat chatting to him for about half an hour. And he says, do you want me to check to see if they've gone? He checked to see if they've gone. And off I went. So I literally ran through his house, man, and he ended up making me a cup of tea. Bless his heart. Wow. Yeah, man. That was a good one. So the police the police had dispersed by that point that you yeah, were yeah, you were safe. Yeah, I was in there a good half an hour, three quarters of an hour having a cup of tea with him and his wife. That is like the, the cutest story I've ever heard in my life, bro. Yeah, they were, they were like an old elderly elderly uh, Indian couple and they just sat me there and made me this I just remember this tea was just so sweet. Really sweet tea and just sitting there just talking shit really while the police are wandering around looking for us. Your anxiety must have been like up to fucking fifty. Yeah, man, it was. It was. Uh, it, it was on me like a dog, man. I just couldn't believe it, and just I didn't even think. I just ran into this garden. I mean, it's kind of lucky she was hanging the washing out because I guess the the house would have been locked otherwise, and I'd just been hiding in that garden or something. But that was a good chase. Um, Hospit a few Hospit there. hospitable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very decent of them. <laughs> yeah. That's very few and far between. You know, you know, there's often a superhero somewhere that just wants to kind of pipe up and uh, and single you out, right? Yeah, yeah. But that was a good one. Um, what else? There's been a few, man. No, there's been quite a few. But it's quite, um, it, it's very much part and parcel, right? I mean, if you don't get that, this is to my account, if you, if you don't get that adrenaline, then that kind of beats the objective, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, that, that was, I guess that kind of pinpoints the difference between painting then as to painting now. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Now it, it's, it's more chilled. You take your, you take your, your speaker or whatever, play some tunes. Do you know what I mean? Have a nat with your mates. And it's more, it's more of a, a social thing now, I guess. 
Whereas mm. back then you had to worry about other crews, police, just do gooders grassing you up or whatever, or yeah, you know, crackheads or tramps or whatever in some of the places you go. I've seen a tramp shit up a wall what I was painting. <laughs> in, in a hockey that was. Painting this wall and this guy walk, comes walking down. I thought, oh man, he stinks. And he just lent up the wall and just just shit. So I was like, mate, what the fuck? That ain't a the colour I'm used to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then with some of the places that, that we go, do you know what I mean? You see all sorts, man. Well, that doesn't age. I mean, I, I, you know, without question, there's, there's other environments, places where you can paint. But you know, when you mm. think about Dig Digworth nowadays, uh, to my knowledge, it's, uh, it, you know, it's, it's pretty chilled considering. Yeah, yeah, it ain't too bad. It ain't too bad there. I was glad to, I was glad to hear the paint shop had gone, man. I, did, yeah, I mean, I. To be fair, I live just outside of Brum, and I don't really paint that much in Brum. No, I don't doubt that. Um, not for any particular reason. I just, I don't know. I just, a lot of it, I suppose, is, is now I mainly paint with uh, Posey and he's up in Nottingham and we, we travel about a bit. Mm. So we, and there's not that many spots in, there is spots in Brum, but a lot of them are a little bit, mm, mm. do you know what I mean? A bit of a grey area and I'm I'm not. I'm not going to put my. I'm not going to ruin my day with any hassle of oh you can't paint there or blah blah. But I just want to enjoy the day. I feel that. You know I, mean? I don't yeah. want any anyone nattering in my ear or anything. I just want to chill, man, and go and paint. Yeah, and often when it gets to those more uh, tourist esque spots, that's another thing, isn't it? Because while it's it's tolerated and in a lot of places far beyond legal. You're also susceptible mm. to people just coming up to you, you know, DD commissions and things like that, right? Yeah, yeah. People just talking or I don't know. I just like I just like to do, to chill out and enjoy the painting. You know, I'm not. I mean, it's sort of when we paint some of the events as well. I don't mind them, but if I can pick a wall that's out the way a bit, mm. then I'll always go for that wall always. Yeah, so I can a... just enjoy the day and not. I do feel a bit um, when there's lots of people there. We've painted some events and there's been just hundreds of people there, and I just I, I don't particularly like it. Mm. I prefer to be out the spotlight a little bit. I think that's why I said to you earlier. I felt a little bit nervous about doing this because you know I prefer to be in the background, really. Yeah, it's and it, really... and I'll be honest with you, it's it's an absolute you know it's a it's a gift you you being here and shedding light on your career, your 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 art up till now, bro. Um you know, the the inside workings of a of a seasoned graph writer's mind, I think that's what a lot of us, you know, are endeared by. You know what I mean? Like I think the biggest question is why? And I think you've answered a lot of those questions in this episode, man. I hope so. <laughs> For sure. What's the future? What's the future? Um, no idea. Just take each day as it comes, man. That's me anyway. I don't really. I don't. Really, I, don't I don't. I just tend to take each day as it comes in general. Mm. Um, I mean, uh, graph wise. Just to do the best I can as long as I can, and then when I get too decrepit to paint walls, just move on to black book more, I guess. Do you know what I mean? I'm 54. I'm sure there is a handful of writers older than me, but and there's a few kind of my age, but not mm. many. Mm. It's getting less and less. So, Last of the Mohicans know. right here. Last of the Mohicans, right? <laughs> Real tall. I don't know. I mean, like I said, my... My plan is just to enjoy it and do the best that I can. And that's what we want to see. That's that's all it is. That's what we want to see. We want to see you constantly elevating, constantly moving. Endeavour, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on, brother. Honestly, like 10 out of 10. Thank you very much, man. My guy. Well, if you ain't inspired by now, then yeah, you need to go and check out another 500 podcasts. That's what I'm saying. Uh, (laughs) Yo, (laughs) Endeavour, thank you so much for joining us, man. What a pleasure. Thank you for asking me, man. Appreciate it.
Blessings all day. Killer Keller Podcast. Hello, he was out of fashion. Birmingham stand up. You know what it is. Uh, sharing is caring. Tell a friend, tell a friend. Uh, crime don't pay, but neither do they. All right. You stay lucky. Don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. Peace. <laughs>